decks. Yeah, I think if you were to ask a lot of the top players what would be, you know, the two expected you know, top decks uh, in terms of the, you know, decks that were good before but also better now in terms of Chen Pao, but also you know, top before and still top now, I think Charizard and Chen Pao would have probably been two of the top picks that most of the top players would have uh, mentioned to you. This is a very interesting dynamic. These are two very interesting lists playing cool cards. Now, most players with this Gen Pao deck are just going to use that Backscalibur line and utilize Rare Candy, and Hector is still doing that, but funnily enough, maybe as a little bit of support and maybe as a tech to the popular Technical Machine Devolution card is playing a copy of that Arctivax. What do you think about that, Freya? It's a very interesting inclusion. We were just talking yesterday about how, you know, the Benetti X inclusion uh, in um, John Eng's list could be a way to disrupt these uh, Chen Pao decks. Uh, if they, you, know, you can't Rare Candy, you can't get the Backscalibur out. If you have an Arctivax, you have a way to play around that. So. Day where everyone knows everyone's there, so you know, you know, card for card. There are still so many players in this day too. You don't really have the you know, easy means to be able to you know, scout out um, what other people are playing as much. Maybe you might hear some murmurs, but uh, yeah, go for the prime catcher there means that you know, Hector's going to need to be a little bit um, uneasier, I guess, about you know, keeping track of how many gusting options that uh, Tord has been through. And um, but also they can maybe rest a little bit easier knowing that uh, a maximum belt can't you know, come down early on to get a KO when Tord might otherwise not be able to get it. 
Yeah, one of the big things with GM Pow is you could kind of just sit and wait to take a prize card before certain pieces come out. And there are two Backscalibur in the prize cards, and that is the only two Backscalibur that Hector plays, and they're both at the top. Hector, at this point, is going to be shut off from using that Super Cold ability. That is a devastating blow for him to not have those cards. That is an absolute disaster for Hector. Oh my goodness. Oh, you... wow. So Hector here is going to have to find his assuming heavy ball very fast, shuffle the prizes, and then hopefully, you know, the, it'll shuffle it into a more favorable position to be able to take it. That is absolutely devastating start for Hector. Goodness me. Yeah, and I would note that Tor does have that Manaphy prize. That is an important card. Oh, but yeah. How important is it when you have to manual attach three <laughs> times to your Radiant Greninja to be able to use that Moonlight Shuriken? Wow, we're getting a lot of plot armor. I feel like every time Tor goes on stream, he's got so much plot armor. Hey, who put those Baxcalibur in the prize cards? Who put them there? I want to talk to them. I uh, couldn't possibly tell you, Ethan, but uh, I'm sure like, it's going to be interesting to see how this set develops, right? Because we're going to see Hector try and do a setup, notice what's going on. And I think Tor's going to cost it on very quickly to, hold on, something's not quite right here. You know what, you know what I mean? We just have that, have that hunch. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to hide the fact that your main energy acceleration, the whole namesake of this deck is prize. Prize or not, we are getting into this round number 10. The first round of day two is kicking off. Hector will be going first, so he'll have the opportunity to check this deck. And I would say this is an excellent start. We keep have to note that those Backscalibur are prized, but a pair of Buddy Buddy Poffin in the hand means that Hector will get these basic Pokemon into play and very quickly will realize something is not right. Yeah, it's like, hold on a second. <laughs> this doesn't feel good. Um, we do see, he does go for that Spirit Tomb straight away. We did mention earlier that it's a great, great um, option to, you know, shut off the Rotom V. And given that uh, Tor did start the Rotom V, seems like a very obvious, you know, first uh, thing to go for just to make sure that there's uh, no instant charges happening early on. And yeah, as you mentioned, Ethan, the second Buddy Buddy Poffin as well. So, I mean, normally you look at this and you think, what a phenomenal first turn setup. But if you can't if I was to back Scalibur, then you know, what are you going to do? So Hector can't change the prize cards, but he's got to play this game out. What do you think his best unconventional strategy here is without having that super cold ability online? I, I think the best unconventional strategy is, as I mentioned before, find that he's doing heavy ball, shuffle the prizes, and hopefully you can get to the back Scalibur sooner rather than later. You're going to have to yeah. do some manual attachments, take some KOs somewhere, and just try to find some way to fish this back Scalibur out. I mean, it, you, without it, your deck is you know, just dead in the water. You have to fish it out. Well, it's hard for Hector because Hector doesn't have that information that those two backscaler put the top, so his suit heavy yeah, yeah. ball doesn't really change anything. Oh, yeah, anything no, I guess you're right, him. yeah. I mean, I mean, he might still go for it anyway just because there is a champ on the prizes as well, and uh, so maybe he might want to mm -hmm. fish that out, or maybe knowing that, you know, the uh, two backscaler was a prize, maybe he wants to do his suit heavy ball just to see what else is in there. I mean, it's it's a nice thing to go for early on when you can, but yeah, maybe digging for it specifically when you need to set up other stuff isn't the best. But we do see an attachment onto the bench, uh, Fridgey backs, and then just a pass from Hector. So Tord Gid did get a few of those mulligan cards to start the turn off. We'll have lots of pieces to work with, and no surprise, Buddy Buddy Poffin, the first card getting played. Tord will check the deck, see what's available, and start to get these basic Pokemon into play. Yeah, and I imagine, uh, if, especially if he has access to you know, even more basic Pokemon from the deck, or maybe like more Buddy Poffins or more Nest Balls, he will be wanting to grab that Cleffer. Of course, that Spirit Tomb is already online, as we mentioned earlier, so this Rotom V is not going to be doing much of anything right now other than sitting there being pretty. Uh, and so if you want to get that extra draw, that Cleffer is going to become very, very important. Yeah, kills still can be a target for that Forest Steel Stone. That is true. So you can still use that Star Alchemy V-Star Power. It's a little bit of a quirk that... Uh, while it's technically an ability that is on Rotom, it's not Rotom's ability, but we'll save the nitty-gritty and uh, technical details for another time. And I mean, there isn't really is anything like a Arvin in this hand or an Iono to draw more cards, so I think from this point here, Tord is just going to play this Professor Turo, take that Rotom out of play. It's not going to have a lot of value, like you mentioned, because of that Feathered in Misfortune ability on the Spirit Tomb. And, We'll just pitch it away with Ultra Ball, get and another basic Pokemon into play, and use that Grasping Draw at the end of the turn to fill the hand back up. I know, honestly, uh, all things considered, this is a pretty perfect start from Torgo, considering, you know, what he was uh, when it went up against. So, able to use the, not just the you know, attach energy to retreat, but actually one of his two friends, Turo, to pick up the Rotom, and as you mentioned, not doing much, to so just take it out of play, Ultra Ball it away, grab it on a basic, and then prevent that Cleffa. It's a really, really good start from Tord. Yeah, I'm sure Tord is probably sweating a little bit here because that Mana Fee is prized. There's really no point to put this second Charmander down no. because you're just going to kind of get Moonlight Shuriken regardless and lose both of those pieces. So I think Tord at this point said, you know what, my opponent, he didn't retreat into Chien Pao. I know there's not a lot of energy cards most likely in this hand. How realistic is it for my opponent to get that Greninja down, use that Moonlight Shuriken, get Rare Candy, Baxcalibur? So I think Tord is just going to be content with filling the hand up and 
giving himself some options for the following turn. And I must say, I am a fan of how Torda, and it seems like a lot of uh, the Charizard players are doing this. You're worried about, you know, uh, Pidgeot EX being shut off or being an easy target for Iron Hand. So you're playing a mixture of the Barrel and the Pidgeot EX. You have the option to like draw, you have the option to search. I think it's really cool that these Charizard lists are opting for the split, and it makes a lot of sense in my eyes. And preemptively playing that Collapse Stadium, not letting Hector put another Pokemon into play. None of these Pokemon right now are great attackers. So Hector will need to find one of those two Pokestop that are in the deck, and that could be toward maybe having some list knowledge because most GM Pow decks do not play such low copies of that Pokestop Stadium card. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we are at the point where these players uh, may have, again, like, like I mentioned at the start, some idea, but not a perfect idea of what each other is playing. So you know, maybe at this point, you know, Torda has some idea, like you mentioned, that there's a low Pokestop count and opting to preemptively play that Collapse Stadium just to give Hector a bit of a harder time. But we do see there Hector going for the Ultra Ball. Just grab that bit barrel straight away. Yeah, bit of a costly Ultra Ball at that. Does have to get rid of Rare Candy and that Superior Energy Retrieval. But the barrel is here now. We'll be able to use that Industrious Incisor's ability to draw some more cards. And we're just going to see the oh. Prime Catcher on the Charmander. And it is that 60 HP Charmander. That means this Frigibax with one more energy can hit this Charmander for weakness and knock it out. You, you, you were talking about yeah, what's the strategy, what's the heads up play that you can do when, when your back is against the wall. This seems pretty good. <laughs> Hey, look, Frigibax can get in there just because Baxcalibur is unavailable doesn't mean that Hector is going to give up without a fight. We're even going to see the Arctabax oh, wow. potentially get grabbed. And hold on, can this Arctabax take a knockout too? I mean, I've got to be honest, we really don't see Arctabax in this deck a lot, so we'll see. have to see how this puts on pressure. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, it, we were talking about how it was a great utility card just to make sure that, you know, you're able to evolve uh, through a item lock and also giving yourself a contingency plan um, against uh, TM Devolution. But now maybe we're going to see it attack as well. <laughs> yeah, it does have that attack. Sharp Fin for two energy. That does deal 40 damage, but not needed when you can just use this Frigibax to deal enough to knock out this Charmander. And I mean, I have to wonder for Tord, was it worth getting down something like that Bidoof when you could have instead put another Charmander into play and given yourself a lot better attacking options for the following turn? You know, you're so, you're so nailed in on, you know, being scared about Greninja to the point where you think it's not much point getting two down, but then you forget, oh, what if my opponent could just use something like a Prime Catcher to bring up my one Charmander and KO that? And uh, this is going to buy Hector the time he needs to find these uh, Baxcalibers too. So this is very, very important for Hector to do. Yeah, but we still have not seen that Hisuian Heavy Ball be used. So Hector will take a prize card, but it's not that Baxcalibur. Those no. two Baxcalibur are still sitting in the prize cards, unavailable. And Hector now, he did all he could, tried to take that prize card. I mean, you had a one out of three chance of drawing yeah, yeah. into one of those two Baxcalibur, but didn't find that. And with how this is looking for Tord, Maybe this Frigibax for now could be safe. There's not a lot necessarily threatening an attack, but who knows how much more can this Frigibax do if more Charmanders are going to come into play. Now Hector has lost that gusting option that's available. That is the only way that Hector can bring up bench Pokemon that he chooses. Does play that Iron Bundle, but Tord is not going to be giving up these Charmanders easily from this point. Okay. You say that. There is technically one way in which Hector could uh, do more gusting. He is playing... The one of Silene. Oh, <laughs> and boy. he could use that to put the Prime Catcher back on top of the tech. Are we flipping coins to win? This feels like <laughs> a different time period. You know what? I'm all for it. I'm all for some exciting action to kick off our first round of day two. Now, Tord does have this Cleffa in the active spot. I mean, you can draw some more cards, but you're just going to be giving up another prize card to Hector because Cleffa, while it's a great support Pokemon, does only have that 30 HP. I gotta say, is this the first time we've seen Chili for KO on on, on stream on the on the fridge max? I think it, I think it actually might be. Definitely could count the amount of times on both fingers, most likely. <laughs> and it looks like we're just gonna see that the barrel get evolved on towards side, and then the industrious incisors to draw a few more cards. And now has a few choices of some supporter cards. Do you play that Arvin, or maybe disrupt the hand a little bit with Iono? And Tord will choose to play that Iono. And I mean, this collapse stadium. Didn't really do much for Hector, and more on the other side for Tord. There's only just that one Charmander in play because both players only having four bench Pokemon due to that stadium's effect means that there's no more Pokemon that can be played down for either player. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you, you know, you had this collapse stadium here and you thought, you know, preemptively uh, you, you reduce Hector's bench options, but uh, Tord did actually have the other Charmander in hand, but then just couldn't bench it because of his own collapse stadium that he played. So, yeah, kind of... Uh, 
backing himself into the corner a little bit there, and now he's kind of in that same vulnerable spot where, although, as we mentioned, it's unlikely given the resources that Hector has access to, if he can use another Gusting card, bring up the Charmander, Tord is basically in the same spot again. Yeah, and with this Ultra Ball, it looks like Tord's hand is pretty poor. We may see this Cleffa fill the hand up. Ultra Ball will discard two cards to put one into the hand, so essentially a net minus two in terms of hand size for Tord. We will see what the choice is, but... I mean, you know your opponent's probably struggling. They didn't play Rare Candy to get that back Scalibur, and yep, it's just going to be another Cleffa filling the hand back up, and Hector will have another chance to find one of these back Scalibur out of the prize cards. Yeah, and uh, you know what this means? This means not only is Chili taking a knockout, it's going to take another one, two turns in a row potentially, just because this Cleffa has such a low amount of HP and uh, Chili does enough damage. Wow, we are going to see some more energy cards put onto these support Pokemon, onto that Arctivax. And the question for Hector is, what else do you do? I mean, the way this sort of is going to work out, I think, oh boy, does it's Hector have that Silene? Is it time to just play this Silene? I don't think there's any other way for Hector to play these cards. And I think we're probably just going to see the Silene get played. The energy's been played down, but no, no. just going to preserve the Silene. Hector taking another prize card and still not drawing into those back Scalibur. And now they are still stuck at the top. Hector has to just be thinking, come on, this is the most <laughs> important match for me to start the day off. What can I do? <laughs> No, no, most important matches to start off, and somehow Hector has a two price lead in spite of the fact that he has you no know, back Scalibur in play. And like, this, this fridge back is putting in work. Speaking of another Pokemon we don't see get in too early, it looks like Tord may be looking to use this Radiant Charizard's Combustion Blast with another energy attachment or Infernal Rain ability. It will have enough energy due to Hector taking two prize cards, of course, that Excited Heart ability, allowing that five energy attack cost on Charizard to be reduced based off of the amount of prize cards your opponent has taken. So yep. we'll finally see Rare Candy Pidgeot now towards main support engine online. And we'll just grab another Rare Candy. So here we go. Infernal Rain will yep. get that third energy card onto this Radiant Charizard and power up this bench Charizard EX. Yeah, so Tor definitely firing on all cylinders now. As uh, now, uh, unlike Hector, Tor has full access to all the stage twos, and yeah, this Charizard is going to put in some great sort of one prize work and uh, deal with this uh, this uh, Frigid Backs. It's done so much uh, damage to Tord. Or slight collection correction from earlier. The Chili is the other Frigid Backs, of course. Uh, this this one just has the tackle attack. That's uh, does plenty damage. So. Hey, look, tackle can get the job done. It more than did that here for Hector, but not taking either of those back Scalibur. Just so unlucky to have those both stuck at the top of the prize cards and. Now for Tord, you've got Radiant Charizard set up. That's a great Pokemon to deal with the only major threat, I'm sure. Maybe Tord has some sort of leaming suspicion that Hector may have prized some of those important key back Scalibur pieces. Yeah, that is a very interesting uh, tech card from Tord. We see not a common inclusion in Charizard list. That team yells cheer, which it looks like is about to be slammed down now, maybe? Thinking about it? Of course, it does let you get back uh, supporters uh, and uh, just supporters or is it a stadiums as well? Yeah, you can get Pokemon back with it as that, well. That was it, it will yeah. be that Rotom chosen to be put back into the deck. We see that Tor is holding on to that Forest Seal Stone, and that is just one more way to get some more pieces out of the deck. Still has yet to use that Barrel, so we can see a card drawn off Industrious Incisors. Tord has found what he needs to. Did lose that Charmander early, but has clawed his way back. Thanks to, the, of course, the help of Hector not having some of those key pieces available, but you've got to take what you can take when you're at this position. Yeah, and it's going to be really tricky for Hector now because Hector doesn't really have a great response to this Radiant Charizard. You know, right now, if he had a back Scalibur, he'd be absolutely smooth sailing, he could power up a Greninja or pretty much anything, but with any one energy attachment, I don't think there's any way that Hector can take a knockout on pretty much anything that Tord has. So there it is, Combustion Blast, dealing more than enough damage to knock out this poor Frigi Bax, but you've got to do what you've got to do. Hector sending up this Spirit Tomb, that has got to be a little bit of a red flag for Tord maybe to see, especially because Spiritomb really not here to use any of its attacks, just here for that Fettered in Misfortune ability. Lap Stadium is still in play, so can, Hector can only grab one Pokemon potentially off of this Buddy Buddy Poffin. I think it's all going to be about maybe playing a bunch of these item cards that are in the hand. We do see Irida and Silene, both supporter options. But I feel like now that Tord has evolved all these Pokemon, now that they're sort of out of range from anything like the Radiant Greninja, like this Arctabax, I 
feels like Hector is really going to struggle to take these prize cards, especially needing to take this Baxcalibur off the next prize. If it's not taken off the next one, if it's in those last three prize cards, really Hector is going to start running out of options. Yeah, so I think at this point what we have to do is put down a Chen Pao and just start attaching to it manually and then, you know, try and take a knockout on something because it's pretty much the one thing that can do the most damage with the fewest manual energy attachments. It's but so then... tough because if you put that Chen Pao down because you've already taken two prize cards, that Charizard EX, using that Burning Darkness will be dealing enough damage to knock oh, Chien Pao well, out. Yeah. So as soon as you drop the energy onto it, oh. Quick Surge can find that boss's orders, and yeah. now you will be in an even worse spot. Minus an energy attachment, minus two prize cards, and Tord will just start running away with this game. Where's Path to the Peak when you need it? <laughs> well, Path to the Peak, that ship has sailed yeah. now. There is no way to shut off at the moment these rule box Pokemon abilities. Besides something like the few niche options, and Here you know what go. you gotta do to save sometimes. You gotta flip these coins. It That's is a double, double head. Hector <laughs> bumping his fist up, and you know, even in a position like this, having a little bit of fun, that's all you can really do. And maybe Hector is thinking, do I bring back this prime catcher, try and stall up this barrel? But you've gotta have a feeling your opponent hasn't played anything like a Turo. They actually just shuffled one of those Professor Turos into the deck. They played well, just one very early on, right, to pick up that Rotom, and then yeah, it's back in the deck now, so. Uh, Hector knows it's something that, it, that Tord can get because, of course, uh, with Quick Search, just once per turn, you can just get any card you want. There's the perfect uh, card for every single turn, and that's why Pidgeot is still such a phenomenal card in these Charizard decks and in just in general. Got even better now that that Pat's the Peak has rotated out of the format. See those cards get put onto the top of the deck, and either ability can be used. So just make sure we have a clarification on everything that is going down in the game. I believe we have not seen concealed cards be used yet, so we'll finally see that. Drawing two cards will be into that Prime Catcher and the Superior Energy Retrieval that was put onto the top of the deck thanks to that Silene supporter. I mean, look, if Silene Red put two cards from your discard pile on top of your deck, it would be very, very good. Yes. The only issue with this card is sometimes the supporter reads, play this card, have some fun, flip some coins, and then do, do nothing. nothing. Yeah, that, that, that is the risk you take with these coin flip cards. You know, some of them, as Silene, are strong enough to just warrant it. We saw the new VMAX list played Silene for a very, very long time because it was one of the few ways to get back vital resources. It seems like now Hector is taking that same logic and applying it to Shenpao. Yeah, and just use that Industrious Incisors for one card. Was really looking for a useless card to pitch away with the Superior Energy Retrieval, but drew into another supporter card and now Hector has a very tough decision. Do you get rid of an Irida? That's a powerful resource to grab key pieces. Do you get rid of the Cypher Maniac? That's another way to search out specific cards, and it will have to be that Cypher Maniacs used to be discarded, and it's just going to be an attachment to this Arctivax and a pass of the turn over. Now, towards action has started. The big advantage, though, to not having Switch in your deck, or rather the downside, is that you cannot play something like a Professor Turo the same turn as a Gusting card like Boss's Orders, but guess what a spec Tord is playing in his deck? It is that Prime Catcher. A prime Catcher coming in super clutch here, and this is exactly, it's exactly for situations like this that I think Tord think, uh, ended up thinking to himself, you know what, Prime Catcher is so vital in so many situations, it is, I would rather have that than the extra damage from Maximum Belt, because in these situations here, it is so, it is so, so powerful. Yeah, and honestly, if I'm Hector, as soon as you see this Prime Catcher get slammed down, I think you just pick up your cards. There I, is yeah, no way so. to win this back. I honestly think after you took that prize card that wasn't a uh, that wasn't a Baxcalibur, I think you also just picked up your cards. But Hector just wants to play things out. But the downside to playing a game out like this that's a little bit longer is that you really start cutting your chances to win a set because if the next game goes for a standard 20 to 30 minutes, there's not going to be three games completed. We will see the Prime Catcher get played, and I think if you're Hector in this position, yeah. this is probably a position where you've got to pick your cards up and say, yeah, I'm not winning this game, let's just go to the next one. It's not a nice thing to talk about necessarily because you, you don't want to say, oh, the, the players just give up, but it's not just about saying, oh, you give up because you don't think you can win. It's about recognizing the reality of the situation with the timer on the clock and making sure that you, exactly like you mentioned, Ethan, you have enough time to maybe play out a second and third game to make that comeback. Will just be another combustion blast. Radiant Charizard heading in there, taking some prize cards, and Hector is just left with support Pokemon all in the play. We'll see the Irida get played. I mean, Hector's gonna take one more look at the deck, see what can I really do in this spot, but Freya, I think it's game yeah. two time, and Hector agrees here. Maybe to do one last Irida, just check. Everything is definitely prized, right? I'm not just imagining it, and uh, yeah, he's gonna have a look now and realize, yeah. 
That was, I was never getting those bad scalpers, was I? <laughs> yeah, I think you probably just keep your mouth shut and just pretend like something wrong happened, but I'm sure Tord, being the player he is, had a hunch that he got a very lucky break in that game. Didn't necessarily need to be bailed out based on his draws, but because of those backscalibur being prized. That was almost like a non-game Hector. Had some cute plays that he did. We did see the tackle get in there and yep. take a knockout on the Charmander, but that was really all Hector could do. Do these niche plays to try and buy some time, take some prize cards. Backscalibur hiding out in his little ice cave, not <laughs> coming out at all for Hector here in round 10. And yeah, you know, maybe if, you know, as you mentioned, maybe if Hector found the Backscalibur early off the first or second prize, maybe there could have been a chance for something, because you know, Hector did everything he could. Given the hand he was dealt, he played as well as he could have done, and he did exactly the you know, right things. He he took his knockouts, he tried to stop Tord from being able to set up as well by carrying the lone Charmander, but just not able to find those Backscalibers. Yeah, hopefully we'll be seeing a little bit of a better game in game two. It's part of the Pokemon TCG, it's part of that variance. You hate to see it happen on the big stage, but there's a representation for what happens when you're playing 16 best of three rounds. If you go to distance multiple rounds, there is a chance that you're gonna have multiple of those key pieces prized. See if Hector decides to go first or second. I feel like this is a matchup where you pretty much always want to just start things out, go first, try and put on pressure. Hector is playing a copy of that, or is actually not playing something like the Canceling Cologne. That is a card that can be super useful uh, against a deck that plays mana feet like Tords to maybe threaten that Moonlight Shuriken on the second turn, but that can be really difficult to find, especially when you're going first. Yeah, it really can be. It's um. There's no Cancer Clone in this list, is there? I don't know if I can see. So yeah, there's unfortunately not an option, but it is something that we have seen a lot in uh, in Chen Pao lists uh, in the past. Um, it's like there's, there's a sudden surge of noise in the venue. Something exciting is happening in one of the other games. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're having a little bit of technical issues, but we'll make sure we get things settled out. A little bit of a tense moment here between our players. So once everything gets figured out, you see everybody's sort of holding yeah, onto yeah, their yeah. headphones. So I hope everything gets resolved and worked out so we'll sort of pause talking a little bit about maybe the specifics of this matchup but I mean there are so many storylines of course going outside of the field we'll be providing updates throughout the rounds of course players are looking to get to those 36 match points and this is of the hardest ornaments to top cut. And this is sort of what happens through the game. We had a lot of things change through the season. We had the prize money increased. We, of course, had an excellent destination for our world championships, Honolulu, Hawaii. More players are getting back into the game, are putting more time into the game, and these events are getting bigger, which thus, in turn, means it's harder to make top cut. Yeah, and there's more on the line than ever, right? You know, the more that is on the line, the more players are going to want to be really gunning for those top spots. As you mentioned, twenty-five thousand dollars for a winner—that is a huge prize, and that's going to draw people from all over the globe to try and uh, compete to be that top trainer. Yeah, more than double of what it was last year—that ten thousand dollar prize for winning one of these international championships. Of course, that guaranteed invite. Usually, if you win an international championship, you've played a little bit of Pokemon this season, so you're going to have the necessary points to get yourself to that Honolulu, Hawaii destination at the end of the year. So hopefully we'll get everything resolved, get back to the match. But this is going to be intense. I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the other stories in the event. We, of course, saw a bunch of different decks. We featured some decks and we didn't feature some decks. We actually have a really interesting statistic here. At the start of this round, one fourth of the players at 24 match points or more we're playing some sort of a control deck, having the potential oh. to maybe have an alternate win condition of trapping a Pokemon in the active, getting rid of resources. How does that statistic sit with you? Um, it's, it's kind of surprising and not at the same time. I think um, Eerie is uh, the, the really, really big factor here. That is one of the most powerful control cards we've seen in a very long time. Of course, that support card that lets you just look at your opponent's hand and discard two items from there. So, so, so strong. And I think that's going to be, I think that's really, really the, the, the crutch that's making control the so much more powerful than it is and is drawing so many more people to play it than usual. Yeah, super versatile card. I think when the card came out, people we got flashbacks to some other hand disruption yep. cards. Uh, Erica didn't really see play in a lot of other control type decks because, yeah, most of the time your opponent could have something like a Lumineon or a Squawkabilly hiding in their hand, and that would be a great Pokemon to bring up, maybe use a Ampu very much, put some pressure <laughs> on, take some extra prize cards. But for the most part, there's better options in the format for that gusting effect. 
in terms of discarding items, we are at a point where item cards maybe have never been more powerful than the Pokemon TCG. There's been some times, but Mirage Gate, Super Odd is a recovery card. That's usually the only way people are putting Pokemon and energy cards from their discard pile back into their decks, of course. Rare Candy, Ultra Ball, Ways to Search Out. There's so many good trainer cards, rather good item cards. And Eerie not only gives you that hand information, but allows you to discard those cards and completely throw your opponent off their game plan. Yeah, and it, and, it, and it's the, yeah, the information, looking at what your opponent's hand, discarding their resources, it lets you sort of plan around what they're going to do next as well, because if you see, yeah, you discard a couple of items, but you see their opponent you know, has, um, you know, it, it, you, you basically decide what to do based on what support they have in hand, say if they have an Iono or, an, or, a, or a Press Research, or if they have no support at all, you might, you might think, okay, I'm not going to Iono them because that's going to give them a fresh hand. There's like so much you could do with that information. Will be a big card to see how everything plays out. And I think we are ready to get back into things. After a short delay, we are going to get back to our feature table match. So we'll throw it back down to the stage and pick up where we left off. So it uh, looks like Hector will be going first this game. Come on! <laughs> we have double the barrel in the prize cards now. First we had double back Excalibur, and now we're prizing both our barrel. What is going on here? And not only that, but one of the back Excaliburs is in the prize too. <laughs> Just, uh, you uh, know what? One of them was lured out of the den. The other yeah. one maybe a little bit more timid, <laughs> staying in the den for now. Uh, yeah, and uh, actually that's Silene as well that we saw be invited to get back the prime catcher last game, also in the prizes. So yeah, Hector's prize is really not treating him well. So no cards played for Hector besides those two. Frigivax coming down to play and toured with an excellent top deck to start things off. Finds that Buddy Buddy Poffin can get some of these low HP Pokemon into play, these set up Pokemon. We'll just check the deck through, see what pieces are available, and decide how he wants to navigate this matchup, how he wants to build his board up. It is very interesting to note uh, sort of the shift in Charmander. As we see that, you know, for a, uh, for a long while, the 70 HP Charmander, of course, from the 151 was more popular. But a lot of players I've noted opted to go for the 60 HP one from Obsidian Flames instead, Tord included. Yeah, I think really the way that that 70 HP Charmander shined, that first attack for one fire energy, allowing you to discard a stadium, very powerful at getting rid of Path to the Peak. It acts mm. as sort of a last resort option to make sure that your quick search is turned back on. But because we're early on in the format, there's not a lot of super disruptive or necessarily harmful stadium cards that exist. There's maybe things like Lost City, but that's really the most harmful I could think about. So having that 30 damage, especially when it has some usage against taking knockouts versus things like Roaring Moon when it uses Frenzy Gouging, makes sense why Tord is playing that in his deck. And also, of course, important to note that, you know, you're not really fearing a turn two Sableye as much anymore. Like, your Sableye is becoming a one of, maybe even a zero of, in a lot of uh, Lost Zone Toolbox decks. Of course, uh, you know, Lost Mine does 120, put, you put 120 damage, or 12 damage counts anywhere on the field, and that can very easily knock out two 60 HP Pokemon. But you, if you're not worried as much about that, you don't mind having that slightly less HP and the trading off for that, you know, one Fire Energy, 30 damage attack, which can be relevant in a few situations. So I think Tord is just deciding how he wants to play the rest of his hand out at this point. Does have a Fire Energy and a Professor Turo. Now, Professor Turo is a great card, but uh, it's not necessarily uh, something that you want to just get rid of, or it's not necessarily something that's super impactful in this matchup. And I think Tord realizing that Spirit Tomb is not down as of right now, you're usually just using this instant charge on turn one. So it will just be the Buddy Buddy Poffin grabbing that Pidgey and Charmander, and Rotom V, one of my personal favorites, coming down onto play. And I'm sure we'll see an instant charge to close things out. Yeah, instant, hand, really, instant charge, really nice to top up the hand, of course. And Hector not able to get down that Spirit Tomb turn one. So it was going to make the most of that ability whilst he still has access to it. And yeah, just going to go for that straight away with the instant charge drawing. Three cards, it looks like. Oh, the Forest Seal Stone, an Uncharmander, and a Cleffer, it looks like. Yeah, but this is still a spot where you've got to hold your breath a little bit as Tord. You just have that one Charmander down, and the first card played here for Hector is that Irida. There is already a rare candy in the hand. If Hector can establish this Super Cold ability and get three energy cards onto this Radiant Greninja, we could see that turn to Moonlight Shuriken, knock out both the Pitchy and the Charmander, and leave Tord really without a great response for the next turn. It's a very scary position to be in, and it is very much not, not impossible um, at all. It's a bit hard for Hector to get there, but it's very much within reach. He just uh, needs to find, yeah, just... I guess a way to, well you don't need to retreat your Greninja, it's already in the active, but you need free energy. So a, a vessel can almost get you there, but you're going to be one short. Yeah, you may have to just bank off of using concealed cards to see what you can find, but there's really just not a lot of great options because that Babarel uh, is unavailable because those two are in the prize cards. You're really not going to have the ability to fill the hand up a lot more. If Hector just had one energy card in hand, would just have everything he needs in this spot, but now may have to gamble a little bit off of concealed cards. I mean, this has got to be a return at this point for Hector. You had yeah. all the luck go <laughs> wrong on your side. You have still more bad luck with those Babero prize. You've got to hope for just one good break to go your way. 
So there is another Urban Vessel in the deck. So you know, if Hector can draw either two energy or that Urban Vessel, that will be enough to do it. So I imagine you're going to be using Conceal Cards to get rid of this Lightning Energy. Here it is, Conceal Cards. What does Hector find? Big two cards. If we see two Energy Cards or ways to put Energy in, but it's just the one Energy oh. Card, there's no way to play something like a Superior Energy Retrieval at this point. However, did find a Nest Ball. So at worst, Hector can still take a prize card this turn. There is a GN Pow in the deck. Of course, Rare Candy Max Excalibur also online. And I think Hector understands he needs to put aggression on in this spot. Is there any way that Hector could maybe switch the Chempa back out? No, I don't think there is, is there? No, but you got to retreat. No, there isn't, yeah. but Hector does have a super useful tech card in this deck, that Iron Bundle with the Hyper Blower ability. I think this would be a perfect opportunity to use it. There's really not a great Pokemon that Tord wants to put up. However, I think that H Tord may want to just push the Rotom V up in this spot because I feel like in this spot, Freya, if Tord knew that Hector had three energy cards before this GN Pow. There's really no reason to just not use Moonlight Shuriken to take the knockout instead. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it looks like actually Hector kind of maybe not even going to go for that, just uh, opposite Ultra Ball away, uh, the third water energy, and uh, bring up that Bidoof, of course. So Bavara going to be very important to find more resources later on. Maybe Hector's just committing to KO this Jirachi. It's tough because you also want to take prize cards because this deck really struggles to function without Industrious Incisors, that ability on the Bibarel. And this may be another situation where Hector has to make some slightly uncomfortable plays and is just actually going to pass oh. the turn over, not knocking out this Jirachi. I like this a lot because this makes it a lot harder for Tor to take a knockout on this Chen Pao. Of course, you got to be careful. Whenever you take a prize uh, against a Charizard, that is, of course, 30 more damage that Burning Darkness will do. So in this instance, giving that the KO on the Jirachi is not irrelevant, just leave it in the active instead, reduce Tor's damage output, a phenomenal heads-up play from Hector. Tor does have that Forest Seal Stone and that Rare Candy in the hand, as well as another one to follow this up. Star Alchemy, perfect use in this deck. Pidgeot is now online. And Tor can use Quick Search to get Charizard EX into play if he so chooses to. And this is where the decision making comes in for Tor. What attack do you want to use this turn? Tor is playing that Defiance Band. So, yes, if Hector did take this knockout, he would be in for a world of pain. So how will Tord decide to establish the rest of his board? We're just going to see the Charizard get grabbed. And there hasn't been a supporter card played yet, so Tord still has the potential to maybe make a few different plays if he chooses to. Yeah, there are a lot of different options for Tord here. There's... What, what, he grabs, oh, just grabs a Charizard off the quick search. Okay, yeah, Rick Handy already in hand. It's... Nothing feels great to uh, uh, you know, attack into here, though. I mean, you want to take prizes, of course, to win, but you know you can't knock out the Chen Pao. You don't really have, as far as I'm aware, Tord doesn't really have any gusting options in the hand, so no Prime Catch or anything like that to bring something else up. So just going to still wreck Andy into the Charizard, of course, use that Infernal Rain ability. Just get two energy on there just to get things ready, and then maybe... I think I, I, think I understand what Tord is doing here. We may just see this Professor Turo potentially pick up the Jirachi and then bench Charmander. That way, there isn't two Pokemon on Tord's bench that have less than 90 HP that can mm. fall to something like a Moonlight Shuriken. And you know Hector has a pretty sizable hand at that, but really had to burn a lot of resources. There's really no reason to give him potentially more things like supporter cards or energies to work with. And that will be what yes. Tord decides to do. Yeah, again, very, sm very smart heads up play from Tord. So denying that Moonlight Shuriken option from Hector and yeah, going to put down that Charmander instead. And yeah, sure, Hector can KO that, but then or, as you mentioned earlier, all it takes was a Defiance Band on a Charizard EX, and you can take a return knockout on the Chen Pao. And we talked about how Heat Tackle can be useful. Here is a great instance. Put 30 damage on this Chen Pao and slowly start telling Hector, if you don't take any prize cards, I'm going to just hit you with Heat Tackle a few times and then use Burning Darkness to finish off this Chen Pao EX. Yeah, very, very smart. So back over to Hector. We do see the Conceal card straight away. Finds a Manaphy and a Superior Energy Retrieval. So... Uh, unlike uh, many of the lists that we've seen, there's no Delphox in Tord's list, so there's no worry about you know, uh, sort of preventing bench damage there, and if Hector's aware of that, he of course won't put down that Manaphy. But it's something you have to be a little bit scared of, because you don't know the list 100%. Sometimes, you know, that Delphox can catch you a little bit off guard. It's a risk you've got to take some time. I'm, I'm sure something like under 10% of Charizard lists are probably playing that Delphox, especially in the Pidgeot version. I feel like I've seen that more uh, when players are really just playing the full the Barrel version. We'll just see concealed cards be used, and now the next Shivery Chill ability is coming into play. And you actually saw a uh, smart choice from Hector 
didn't play Rare Candy into that back Excalibur. May have maybe been punished if Tord played something like Iono, but just didn't want to have one of these back Excaliburs get chased down without having a great support engine like that Babarel to help help, he help Hector get another one established. Yeah, especially with the knowledge as well. I'm sure Hector probably checked and realized that the second big back Excalibur was prized. So if that one got knocked out, then it has to be a super rod to get it back in, and then you have to fish it out again. So just you know, get to preserve it until it's actually useful and can do the attack. So. That was going to be the retreat uh, from the Chen Power, so two attachments, and then uh, Superior Energy Retrieval going to get back, back a bunch of energy, and then Super Cold is going to attach a bunch more on, and I guess you just go for the Moonlight Shuriken, and you can you, you can soften up the Charizard, I guess, as well, taking a KO on this Charmander, or you could even just do 90 on two things that won't get knocked out, and again, deny that uh, extra damage from the Burning Darkness. And yeah, this is where Professor Turo is so strong, because with the Professor Turo, uh, this 90 damage on the Pidgeot, means that it is in range of potentially an amp you very much later on taking three prize cards and Turo could heal that up but you would um, shut off your Pidgeot engine because of course you can't evolve Pokemon you put down on the same turn no. so this is probably the best target here for Hector is in a lot better of a spot but because Hector has now taken a prize card that means that this GM pal with 30 damage on it could be in range for a knockout from Burning Darkness. So Tord going to be evaluating his options here, recognizing that yeah, that 90 on the Pidgeot does uh, leave it a little bit vulnerable to that Iron Hands EX, but uh, he's going to do a quick search at the very least first, uh, looking through a few different options, looks like, uh, or maybe just considering going for that Buddy Buddy Poppin, going to set up that Manaphy and uh, just uh, Bidoof there on the bench, of course, so it doesn't want to give yeah, full victims to any more shenanigans uh, with that Moonlight Shuriken, so just going to sort of deny that further option from uh, Hector, and yeah, it looks like he's going to go for that Buddy Poppin. Yeah, this is where you have to think about what you want the rest of your Pokemon to look like, uh, Hector is at a position where if he takes a knockout onto this Charizard EX, Radiant Charizard itself will not be able to attack in a single turn with a manual attachment. So this is where you've got to be thinking here for Tord. How do you want to put together the rest of your board? And if he will finally come down, and the Bidoof as well, and the Yell Cheer as the supporter for turn. Tord sees what Hector is trying to cook up later on, wants to have that Professor Turo for later, will be shuffled back into the deck, Thanks to this team's yell cheer. Yeah, very, such a versatile supporter. One of the first times we've really seen this in a non-control archetype. Very interesting choice here for Tord. The fact that you can get back a, you know, any combination of supporters and uh, you know, Pokemon means that you have a little bit more of a flexibility of using it because I guess in theory you can still do the same level of recovery with a combination of a Super Rod and a Pal Pad, but this just lets you do it in you know, one supporter card. We do see another Charmander in the hand. I'm sure we'll see that get played down and we will see just the Charizard retreat is there any way to bring up a bench Pokemon? No, more than content knocking out this Greninja, especially since there is no Babarel in play. Hector will really struggle to be drawing a lot of cards and putting pieces together. He did not draw into that Babarel off the prize card. That Babarel still just sitting there, chilling out in the prizes, and with no Radiant Greninja, with no Babarel, Hector is really going to struggle to put together these big Hailblade knockouts with the key pieces that he'll have access to right now. Yeah, not feeling great. Although we did see Hector did just draw a Prime Catcher for turn, so could maybe bring up that Pidgeot and just finish that off of a Hailblade instead. There, there, there are options for Hector here. So can still use that Shivery Chill ability. Now there are a lot of water energy in the discard pile. I think there's only potentially one water energy left in the deck. So oh. we'll need the one energy to retreat if Prime Catcher is used. Of course, you also have to switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. And then from there, this Pidgeot does have 190 HP remaining. So with how it stands, oh, that, it's, it's like, that awkward number where you oh, would need to discard yeah. four water energy. And at this point, Hector has just has to take a prize card at some point, and it will just be the Prime Catcher, and we're gonna see another tackle come in oh, to wow. take a knockout <laughs> onto this Charmander, but yet again, just doesn't draw either of the Babarels. Super heartbreaking oh. for Hector. It hasn't come down to how he's played it out, but just these factors outside of his control are killing him in this matchup. They're making him struggle really, really hard. It's either, you know, pick your poison. Do you want, you know, no draw or no option to accelerate your energy and do your deck's main strategy? It is really not a good feeling no matter which way you look at it and uh, yeah, Tord again probably recognizing that the awkward situation that Hector's in gonna try and capitalize on it as much as possible we're gonna start off with that quick search uh, looking through to just kind of decide how he wants to go for this next there is that boss's orders that he could just uh, maybe decide to bring up that back Excalibur and just knock it out whilst uh, you know recognizing that Hector isn't really drawing much and is just currently bit barrelless yeah even going after one of those Bidoof could be good later on in the game you would shut that option off Tord is at five prize cards, so we'll still need to take a few sizable knockouts, and this is where really the great players are separated from the good players. Tord, no 
knows what he needs to do in this matchup and already preparing that Radiant Charizard knows that if one of these two prize Pokemon falls, that is going to be the next best Pokemon to use, especially to knock out one of these Chien Pao EX. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. tough situation here for Hector, like, uh, toward doing everything he can to, cap to sort of capitalize on this struggle. Just puts down that Radiant Charizard with the one energy. And there's the counter catcher as well. Just gonna bring out that Chen Pao and actually just, just gonna go for, you know, race for prizes at this point. Yeah, that's the advantage that you have for playing these counter catchers, for falling behind early. And there it is, Burning Darkness, that heat tackle setting up perfectly. 210 damage, knocking out Chien Pao, and Hector is now stuck without a Chien Pao, without any sizable ways to draw cards, but does find an Iono off the top, but really at this point, without having any access to Pit Barrel still, with this massive 330 HP Charizard sitting in the active spot, what can you do? You can attach to the active, I guess? <laughs> the world's strongest Frigidbax, well, it may have to be trying to draw into something like the Arctibax at this point toward doing the smart choice, thinking about all the cards in his hand. Those will go to the bottom of the deck. He can, of course, find one of those if he chooses to with that quick search ability. And I'm just thinking, what does Hector need to find here? Maybe that's good. rare candy back Scalibur. Hold on. There is the rare candy back Scalibur, but it would be at a very hefty cost getting rid of another one of those superior energy retrievals and isn't even going to put another back Scalibur to play, well, discarding that rare candy. Well, 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 he can't. The other back Scalibur is still in the prices, remember? Or the Arctabax, rather. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, oh, okay, that would make more sense. So uh, I don't even think the Arctabax is available is the big problem. And did, oh, did he discard it earlier, maybe? Or, hmm. I think biggest issue here, so the Barrel and one of those Baxcalibur are in the prize card, so Hector may have discarded the Arctibax, but really, what does the Arctibax do for you? I mean, it sets up a little, it means it so you have a little less energy, but that's pretty much the same thing as three energy doing, yeah. what, the 40 or 60 damage that those stage one Pokemon can put together, and this is where it gets very, very tricky. But you're, you're kind of committed to this now, because you've done this Ultra Ball, that means you don't have enough cards to discard to play Superior Energy Retrieval, so yeah, just gonna have to grab that Arctibax, and then, yeah, I guess what's the second attack do, 90 damage? <laughs> does do 80 damage, 80, okay. so at this point it will put Charizard at 250 HP, but that's again another awkward number. It means that you're still going to have to discard five energies. I don't know if Hector has said this a lot this weekend. <laughs> Frost Smash for 80 damage, wow. and now Tord is just 100% in the driver's seat. If Tord can just take a one prize knockout, which is lined up on any of these Pokemon, that means that the next time Hector puts down a Chien Pao EX, it's as good as knocked out at this point. Tord has several ways to take a knockout onto that EX Pokemon. Yeah, and, and at this point, if you have the if you have the means to go for it, you just KO this back Scalibur, right? You've kind of, you're noting that Hector is really not drawing much of anything, so whether it's because of your bad draws, whether because it's prizing, you just take out this back Scalibur, take out any real option for a comeback uh, from attaching more energy. I think that's gotta be what you, you're thinking of if you're toward here. Yeah, maybe even just establishing your board, you have Quick Search available, and if this Pidgeot gets knocked out by anything that can deal enough damage, those Pokemon are two, are two prize Pokemon, so the Charizard that's already powered up will be able to finish that Pokemon off, and I think Tord is doing what he could possibly do. You have to think in your head, how do I lose this game? And the yeah. only way you can really lose is some crazy play like another Iono coming down, maybe a Prime Catcher or a Counter Catcher knocking out your Pidgeot, and then you have no way to draw cards and continue your game plan. So Tord is going to set up this Barrel, backup option number two in terms of drawing cards, and even has the boss's orders yep. and will do exactly like you said, Freya, bring up this back Scalibur, draw more cards with Barrel. Tord Reklev is smelling victory. He is so close to remaining at an undefeated record and moving to 20. 28 match points. Yeah, the door is closing really on Hector. Just again, the prizing just really messing him over in both of those games. Just uh, with the first with the Baxcalibur, now the Bavaro. Just really, really tough breaks for Hector. As you do see, yeah, the Baxcalibur goes down. And what do you do if you're Hector here? You gotta think in the tank. Gotta figure out what your play looks like. Oh. And there's just nothing in this hand. Two superior energy retrieval. Can't even play <laughs> it. We're just gonna see the Frost Smash and a concession toward Reklev, continuing his run undefeated. 9-0-1, oh, you've got to feel for Hector there, but that's just more plot armor for our second place player, our four-time international champion, Tord Reklev, in a great spot to continue his run to another international championship top cut. The plot armor is real as Tord moves on to 9-0-1 oh, now, and uh, maybe gonna go, uh, we were talking about redemption arcs, right? We are talking about you know, how Noah Sawyer, how maybe he wants to make his way to the finals and this time win. And, uh, but Tord has a bit more of a personal vendetta with the, this, the European International specifically, of course, did finish, as you mentioned, the second uh, last year run up to Alex Shemansky, maybe looking to avenge that and uh, take the victory this year. Yeah, there's still plenty of Pokemon left to play, so 
I'll make sure we don't get ahead of ourselves too quickly. Wow, what a crazy set that was. If you ever want to understand how prize cards can lose you the game, this is a match to yeah. walk back. Game one, it was Vaxcalibur. Not having Vaxcalibur, you kind of see what this GM Bow deck is when it doesn't have energy acceleration. It, I don't like to use this word a lot, but it did feel like Hector was kind of playing a theme deck that match. It was <laughs> like playing a theme deck against somebody <laughs> who has like a... It's like going into a battle with level one weapons against a boss who has maxed out stats. Uh, yeah, it uh, really was not a great situation for Hector. And like I mentioned before, Hector played his absolute heart out, all all things considered. He was still trying to, you know, do those little KOs, trying to fish the prizes out, but just not really finding them in time. And uh, yeah, and again, he came to double big hour prize. What a, what a tough, tough break. Got a feel for Hector. Still in a solid spot, eight, one and one. Plenty of room to make a deep run here in day two. It's hard when your first match of the day, you wake up early, you prepare yourself, you get a good night's rest, and it feels like the final boss is sitting in front of you. And not only is the final <laughs> boss in front of you, but it feels like you're playing with a debuff in that <laughs> because all of your Pokemon that you want are just unavailable. And that really was the theme for Hector. I was really looking forward to seeing how the prize dynamic would work, where Prime Catcher or Defiance Band would really have value, but it was Hector's prize cards that were just holding him back from really putting together a solid strategy, yeah, causing just... his loss in this match. And then, and then, you know, off that last Iono finding, you know, an Ultra Ball to, you know, go with the artifacts coming in, but then just attack him for seed, yeah. Super, super tough break for Hector, but super well played from him. And uh, yeah, congratulations to Tord, our first feature match winner today. Our first match winner, this is one of our six Swiss rounds that we'll be bringing to you. Of course, we have me and Freya, and then of course, Alex and Mike will be covering the action. We've got a great team here. We've got some great action. So I'm glad for everybody for tuning in this morning, no matter where you are. Maybe we've got some people in the States. It's what time right now? It's 4 a.m. in the morning, 5 a.m. in the morning. Something like that, yeah. Uh, if you are a, a waker at this early up, you are devoted to Pokemon. You know what? Got to dis you got to respect the grind, right? You've got to respect the devotion to watching Pokemon TCG. Yeah, I've been waking up early, perhaps you know, staying up all night to you know just uh, tune yeah, in. That would be would be the option. Of course, if you're on the West Coast, maybe you know it's a little bit easier. Uh, you know, you, you maybe you're tuning in around about midnight. That's not so bad. But uh, you see, you're gonna you know, like stay up to watch the whole thing. Maybe that's uh, that's uh, that's definitely dedication. Yeah, of course. Of course, we've got the VODs available. We've got our Twitch chat watching, YouTube, so make sure you guys are following the channel, staying tuned with everything that we have for Pokemon TCG. And if you ever missed the broadcast, you can watch back the videos on both yeah. of those respectful channels. And wow, what a match yeah. to think about. Where are we at yeah, now? So not only that, actually, just want to important note, we actually do a rebroadcast of each day as well. So you know, if you want to watch a little bit more of a, you know, sort of more fitting time for you, then uh, straight after the stream's over, there will be a rebroadcast being done, so you can catch that as well. Yeah, that's a fun part of watching these live streams. You can interact with other viewers through our Twitch chat, share your thoughts on the games. We've had lots of exciting moments, lots of funny moments throughout the weekend, and I'm sure we'll be having lots more of those as the time progresses. Yeah, so, wow, what a match there. I, um, I imagine we'll be uh, ready, getting ready to queue up an interview with Todd on the main stage. It's always such a pleasure to hear from Indian Fuse. Not quite ready yet, of course, but I'll be very curious to see what he has to say on those yeah, deck building choices, why he put Joe's Charizard specifically, and uh, yeah, just what he thought about that match in general. Well, he's no stranger to the stage. Tord Reklev on a great run to 